What's up, guys? This is Mike Loris, and this is the set that you've all been waiting for. If you haven't seen it already, I can tell you for a fact that I have not seen the set, but I have heard extremely good things about it. It's going to be Team Liquid on the Radiant versus Fnatic on the Dire. Both of these teams, uh, pretty much steamrolling tournament. I want to say at this point, Team Liquid haven't lost a game, and Fnatic, if they, uh, ha Team Liquid haven't lost a set, sorry. And if Fnatic have lost a set, then it's like only one. So both these teams. Five really vying remaining. for those top spots. So we're going to see who could pull it out between these two. And uh, as soon as this game was played, in like whenever it was, a whole bunch of threads on Reddit, people making highlight videos about this. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know where the good stuff is. I don't know if it's in game one, game two, or if it's in the possible game three. I have not looked that far. So yeah, it's, uh, hopefully it's going to be this game, because I kind of want to just have a whole bunch of excitement. The bans already came out, looking pretty normal, will allow Batrider to slip through the pool, and Team Liquid instantly going to snatch that hero up, along with the Magnus. So they're already going to get a little bit of contention for that mid lane. Magnus is a hero that can go on the off lane. however, as an off lane hero, unless he's up against another solo, kind of you know, uh, awkwardly placed uh easy lane hero, then he's generally not going to have that great a time. He doesn't have the option of going into the jungle like most off lane heroes do. If, uh, you know, like a Nature Prophet, Darkseer, or even a Batrider. So because of that, we might see Liquid laying the Magnus mid and the Batrider uh, could go into the jungle. Who knows? They're going to cap off their lineup with the Gyrocopter. going to get that Magnus-Gyrocopter combination going up in power. Plus, Flat Cannon is a lot of hurt on the side of Fnatic, however... Fnatic, from the looks of it, are, should be more than uh, more than ready to deal with this. The Life Sealer and the Lone Druid, both extremely tanky heroes, so they'll be able Ten to eat the Gyrocopter's remaining. attacks like nobody's business. They uh, really won't be Five able, won't sh uh, take that much damage from the Gyrocopter, at least until the Gyrocopter pulls some really big damage items up. And if the Life Sealer and Lone Druid can get right up into the Gyrocopter's face, then he's going to get squished. But Fnatic, uh, so far I've picked up an extremely solid late game lineup. Silencer, although he will be played as a support hero most likely, will be able to transition pretty well into that late game should he have a successful early game. Get a couple of assists, get a little bit of experience, er, and uh, get those levels up, and then get intelligence stolen. So if this game lasts too long, then Team Liquid, al although they do have a gyrocopter, they're going to be pretty much outmatched from the side of Fnatic. Uh, Gyrocopter can overcome that, of course, by picking up the best item in the entire game, the Divine Rapier. But I don't actually know if that's a possibility at this point. So Fnatic, with that silencer pick, Team Liquid going to uh, ban out the Vengeful Spirit, going to get rid of some more of those support heroes. Fnatic, you still need a mid lane, although silencer can go into that mid lane. I don't really think I've seen him in that role all that much. Generally, when a silencer is picked up, it is purely as a support hero, and you could kind of understand why. He does a lot of damage, he has a lot of utility, and you don't need anything on the silencer. Yes, more stuff makes you do more damage, which is all well and good, but you do plenty of damage even if you don't really have any of those items because of his nukes. Beastmaster is also going to be the ban, so Team Liquid looking to ban out some of those solo mid heroes. Bans from Fnatic. It's going to be the Enchantress as well as the Bane. They really want to get that control out, f out of the way for Team Liquid. Because Team Liquid, right now, they do need a couple of support heroes. Uh, eh, so the pool for support heroes, though, is really quite wide. So it's hard to really ban up any heroes. Ban heroes in preparation for the other team picking up supports. Since if you get all the quote unquote good supports banned out, like if Fnatic bans out the Shadow Team. And Team Liquid could still do something really easy, like pick up the Lena, and that's really not a big deal to them. Supports are, for the most part, interchangeable. Except for Keeper of the Light and Wisp. Those heroes fill some pretty specific roles that you cannot really replace with anyone else. At least, nothing comes to mind, at least. Uh, so yeah, that is the status of the game thus far. And this time, yes, I have checked. I am recording with audio, which is great. Unless it gets like knocked halfway through, which it shouldn't, that would be I would be so pissed. Oh my god, I would be pissed. That would be so bad. So I really want to get this game out. I really want to get these sets out. Final ban from Team Liquid is going to be the Storm Spirit. So another ban for uh, mid Fanatics mid lane. Not be able to pick that hero up, and it is going to be the Visage. Banning out that additional hero, Liquid's 
uh, one of Liquid's signature heroes that support Visage. But of course, that means that the Dark Seer, the uh, Shadow Demon, I'm sorry, does get through. So Liquid probably going to pick that up. There's really no reason not to. They have great setup with it. But nonetheless, they're going to take their sweet time regardless. They're going to have to worry about getting a little bit of late Ten game amplification. As, as I said before, Lone Druid, Life Sealer, as well as Silencer is pretty Five intense to go up against. Remaining. Team Liquid, they have a pretty good team fight right now, but the thing is that there's a Silencer on the other end, so Fnatic, they get that global silence off. They see the Magnus skewering in or you know, trying to go for an RP with his positioning or whatever. Even if they get a uh, global silence off once the Batrider blinks in, that'll be pretty huge. It's going to be pretty hard to do that, but the bat that just means that Liquid are going to have to focus the silencer. If you're going to go for an engagement, you go straight for the silencer. It isn't that hard to do. It's typically what you see when there is a silencer on the field. He's always the target of focus because he's very easy to kill. A couple more picks coming out now. Fnatic going to get that Chen pick up. A little bit more early game presence can open the door for a little bit of early game pushing. Between the Chen and the Lone Druid, there's going to be a lot of meat on the front lines. Bears, centaurs, hell bears, oh my. And Team Liquid don't have the most counter push right now. It is going to most likely force the Shadow Demon to go into a more Shadow Poison heavy build, which isn't too out of the ordinary. I'm sure he's not going to mind that much about getting that. But they really do need that counter push. And Team Liquid going to cap off their lineup with the Windrunner, actually. And Fnatic responding instantly with the Lashrak. So Fnatic might be playing. No, it's actually going to be a Silencer solo mid. No. I don't know. It could be anything. <laughs> well, Sindarin for Fnatic is standing in for them in exchange for a fly, I believe. I don't think flies in this game right now. So he is most likely going to be playing as a support Lashrak, but uh, that would mean that that would mean that the silencer would move towards the solo lane, right? That should be what it means. Uh, but either way, Liquid going to go for the Shadow Demon as well as the Windrunner. Probably going to be a supporting Windrunner. Get a little bit more range on there. Yeah, it is fluff and stuff. Who has not picked up the hero yet? So he is going to be on the Windrunner unless we're going to see a little bit of a switcheroo. And yeah, Team Liquid's lineup has a lot of lockdown now. They have pretty good setup and early game presence. But again, this global silence from Fnatic is going to be absolutely devastating. Fnatic, with their final pickup of the Lashrak, is going to be able to push very, very hard, very, very early. Even with Chen getting one creep, usually you don't want to push at that point. Because you typically would be better off farming the Chen up to a level 5 mark, and then you could push with two creeps, and the more the merrier. However, with the pick up the Lilith Shrak, Prepare if he gets uh, the Diabolic Edict going, and if they lane, or if they uh, move down to somewhere where Hani is, who's going to be playing the Lone Druid, then the Towers from Liquid are going to fall very, very quickly. Power Shot, Shadow Poison, Flat Cannon to some degree, this will all help against this push, but the push from Fnatic, they aren't those little weenie units. Like those Eidolons or the Treants. These are really big units. This is the Bear. These are, this is Chen. This is Diabolic Edict we're talking about. So it's really, really going to be difficult for Liquid to withstand the early pushing power of Fnatic. But even if Fnatic don't decide to go for that, they can just use the early game power of the Lashrak to protect the Fnatic carries. If they open up with an Open Wounds and then transition that straight into a Split Earth, get a little bit of Edict damage going, that's a lot of damage going up against Liquid. For now, let's go over who is playing. Hold on. Thank you, Flub. This is why I like watching Liquid, because they have the good announcers. Alright, so Liquid is going to be IX Mike on the Shadow Demon supporting Bulba on the Bat Rider with a nice beard, man. Very cool. Uh, but Bulba is going to be playing that Bat Rider. His quote unquote assigned role is that hard lane hero. However, not even going to try. He's just going to go straight from the jungle at level 1, get a couple of easy stacks going, then try to burn down some stacked camps. Off. TC is going to be hard carrying the gyrocopter in this game. Fluff and stuff, as I mentioned before, is the Windrunner, and Korok is going to be soloing mid as the Magnus. He's going to be going what looks like one versus one versus Era. Life Sealer solo mid. You don't see this very often. However, Era will have a decent time against this Magnus. And Sindrin is around with double damage rune as well. Let's go over the rest of the Fnatic. Hani is on the Lone Druid. No tail on the Chen. Top lane is going to be Trixie solo farming the Silencer. Interesting. So we are going to be seeing, well, three lanes of farm, really. Korok versus Ira in this mid lane. Uh, Korok will be harassed pretty firmly by Ira, especially if Cinder's going to come in with the split earth, forcing out the instant skewer from Magnus. Quick fingers from him. I actually think Cinder took more damage from the tower than Korok did from that attempted gank. 
This lane is going to be more or less even, especially... Oh, no, never mind. Syndrome's sticking around. This lane should be won by Fnatic. Top lane, since there's no one here, that lane should also be won by Fnatic, because, well, it, it, there's, there's no one there. Bottom lane, where is the TC? Radiant Pushed all the way back, actually. Didn't catch right what Hani actually did, but however, here's what he did. He's tanking up a whole bunch of the creeps, but he knows that he's perfectly safe. He's going to send the bear back to heal. What he did was pull the creeps all the way around, probably taking this route right here. Follow the camera, and then ended up right here, where he's guaranteed a little bit of experience. It's going to force TC back, which is why the creeps for Liquid were so far behind their tier 1 tower. But this is pretty good play from Hani, guaranteeing himself a little bit of experience, trying to get some CS. However, well, even though they dip into the tower range, it is going to be doable for him. He takes a lot of dam takes a lot of damage from doing that, but really it's not going to matter all that much. TC is level 2, and now Hani is as well. TC going to go very aggressive. Actually, Hani, very weak. Didn't expect TC to get so far up into his face so quickly, but he is going to be fine to just fall back. Looks like Liquid... Doing a little bit of lane switcheroo. It's going to be fluff and stuff on the hard lane. The hard lane Windrunner is something that we don't really see all that much these days. However, it is still a viable option to lane her, in my opinion. Windrunner herself hasn't really been picked up that much. Not to say that she's a bad hero or anything. It's just there are better ways to lane heroes these days than the Windrunner solo on the hard lane, where she usually Radiant's doesn't get that much. One versus shit. one uh, against the Silencer, she'll be able to function. So this is going to open up another path for Liquid to get a little bit more income. Ix Mike is going to be 100 percent in charge of the pulling on this bottom lane and Bulba he's just gonna be doing this just stacking pulling or I guess not pulling just stacking fire flying and then burning everything down very very easily level three already on the bat rider and he's gonna be okay to do this. this is something that fluff really can't do he could trade hits with Trixie a lot better than the bat rider can at least for now uh, although if the Batrider was up here, then Fluff would be in the jungle doing you know, pretty much nothing. So, and Liquid making good use of all the resources that they have available. Magnus taking a lot of damage, I assume. Yeah, it was just an open wounds into a split earth, but Korok with an invisibility rune. And there's level 2 Skewer, which is decent range. I don't think it's actually enough to push anyone into the tower, especially with the creep wave not going his way. So, we're off to a little bit of a tame start. Korok has got to be careful if he gets hit by a cha uh, chain stun from that split earth, then he's going to be in a whole world of hurt. But if Korok keeps his distance, attacks with a shockwave on occasion, he should be fine in this lane. Top lane Trixie, 14 for 8 versus Fluff, 2 for 0. Oh. Trixie with that orb harassment really doing a number to that Windrunner. I mean, the Windrunner has some pretty good damage. That extra damage from the silencer that he gets from that uh, Glaive of Wisdom damage, really hard to contest that. And yeah, Fluff even very, very wary of the fact that No Tail is also around in this jungle area. A single troll trap and Windrunner or not, you're probably going to die to this. There's a lot of damage coming from Trixie, a lot of damage from No Tail as well. So Fluff forced to stay back, but th he's actually getting something right now because uh, usually, well, ex with the exception of what Hani's doing right now, which maximizes his experience gain, usually hard lane heroes are either completely shut down or forced to. Oh, wow, Syndrome with the reeds. Korok trying to outjuke him, but he just outjuked himself. If he kept running, he would have been fine. Uh, but top, yeah, usually there is a either a jungling transition, the like you say, screw it, screw the lane. Not even going to try, I'm going to go to the jungle and try to get levels that way. Or they just get nothing. And in this case, the uh, Liquid, they're actually getting something out of that lane. It's not the same as what Hani's doing in that lane, because right now he's playing what I would say the ideal lone druid is when he keeps on pulling those creeps over. And now he's pushed out and he's going to lose his tower, so he's going to be not have that tier 1 tower protection. TC, unfortunately for him, missing that last right click, but it is a tower down for Team uh, Liquid. Now Fluff. Taking a little bit of damage from Trixie should be fine from this. this nuke damage won't kill him. 50 damage. One last top 50 health left, sorry, radiant. on that Windrunner. No tail and Trixie do successfully trade the tier 1 for the tier 1. Trixie's going to stick on this top lane. He's almost at his level 6 mark. TC as well as Ix Mike still pushing up this bottom lane over that bear, pulling the aggro. Going to make things very difficult for them to keep going, at least until the other creep wave arrives, but even then, it's just going to be another bear paw swipe, and then the creep wave aggro is all messed up for Liquid, so I don't see them actually getting this tower at least for another, you know, two or three minutes at the absolute shortest. But Korok is still farming in this mid lane, level 3, level 4. Actually, the levels from Fnatic, not too bad. They're forcing Korok back pretty substantially. Era, more than happy to trade hits with this Magnus, trying to force out the skewer, and if he doesn't skewer, he gets a little bit of free damage. 
We see Korok waiting until the Lashrak raises his arms for the split earth before he uh, skewers on out of there. But if he does get hit a little bit too soon, then he's going to drop. Because there is a lot of burst damage from this Lashrak went full for the burst nuking build. And Magnus, although he is a very tanky hero, won't be able to withstand that much damage, especially since he's you know, only at <laughs> less than 300 HP. Off on this top lane, getting pres pressured back really far by Trixie. This level 3 on this last word is 250 damage. And really, when you don't even have enough health to withstand three of them, then you are in for a world of hurt. And Fluff, he's getting a little bit out of the lane, but really, uh, this is the situation I'm talking about before. Windrunner, not exactly the best on that hard lane and he's really getting forced back because look at that cast range on last word that was pretty ridiculous the circle i think was inaccurate he, that was a lot longer than that but with two troll warlords they should uh, troll summoners i'm sorry they should be able to take down this tower even though they don't have their creep wave a new one is arriving very shortly even popping the hand of god got that level six very early and the tower is going to be killed again by chen so he's now sitting at a lot of gold 1600 on him on top of his already purchased boots of speed most likely it's going to be a quick pair of arcane boots for him. Let's see if he does do that. Yes. And No Tail is going to just make his way around, even without the lone druid, who I thought was going to be a very intense uh, pressure pusher, as well as the Shrak, who has not picked up a point of edict. Regardless of that fact, Fnatic have still pushed down two towers where Liquid have only taken down one, and now they're looking for Korok in the mid lane. He does have RP, so it might be a little bit difficult to kill him, but there's the global silence. Korok is so very dead. Split Earth is going to land, lightning from the heavens, and Chen, after taking two towers, is going to find himself first blood as well. No Tail is going to be swimming in cash, another thousand gold on him. And with still two troll warlords alive, two troll summoners alive. Uh, with these extra skeletons worth of damage, they're going to bring down this tier 1 tower. Ira is looking for the last hit. He is going to pick that up. Mike's Mike on the sidelines. Throwing out a couple points of shadow poison, but really it's a little bit too little too late. Chen making the rounds, taking the tier 1 tower. And Fnatic picking up a very, very distinct advantage in this early stage of the game because they do still have Hani semi-farming, semi-getting pressured back by TC on this bot lane. But Ira, although he has had his experience restricted a little bit, managing that solo mid life sealer he's at 1900 gold so he's going to be well on his way towards what probably is going to be an armlet get a little bit of cost effectiveness out of this life stealer because they do still have Trixie farming and he's at 2000 gold in that global silence to help out with that mag now Sindri going to pop a smoke unfortunately the smoke missed the skeleton warriors although they are most likely just going to get left behind for this ride double damage on the life stealer and miscommunication from Fnatic. Got a double ward that. Oh, TC, you are in a lot of trouble. There's the open wounds. They do have troll traps. They do have split earth, so TP is not going to work. And Gyrocopter does die. Now Hani with a little bit of more, with a little bit more gold and experience for himself. He does have that bear with that entangle. However, what he wants right now is a level 7 lone druid so we get that level 4 bear, so he could get a little bit of demolish action on that. Although, it looks like they're actually falling back. They could I think go for this push. I mean, no Tail still does have these troll summoners. It had them for pretty much the entire game. Ah, it's not going to be the push. It's going to be the Roshan. Why get a tower now when you can get it later? Roshan is something that you would want to take a sooner than early, sooner than later. And when they have this much stuff in the front lines, these skeletons taking a lot of damage, but also dealing a lot of damage. A Vlad's pickup from Era, a very early Vlad's actually. You don't usually see this item on the Life Sealer, a more utility based build. Whereas Life Sealers usually go for more straight up damage, shockwaves, power shots. Gonna spot out the fact that Fnatic are doing this. Now, do Liquid actually want to engage? Gonna de ward the double ward. Magnus looking for a skewer into RP, and the Batrider as well with a blink dagger very quickly. Gonna go straight for Trixie. They want this global silence out. They're going to get him as well. Last word onto Bulba, he might drop to this. No, he's not. Batrider with the Firefly finds a cheese kill on Silencer when he thought he was safe, but surprise, Liquid have a Batrider with the Blink Dagger and Fnatic. The team was nowhere to be found. Now Liquid, they do 
still have the call down as well as the RP, so they could still take this fight. However, 15 seconds left on the clock before Silencer gets back up. They really are frightened of that Global Silence as well as they should be. If the Global Silence cancels off the Mag or the Batrider or even this Windrunner right here, going to take a two nets and then a call down. Fluff is going to get friendly disrupted by Ix Mike, save himself from a possible death. Syndrome taking a lot of damage as well. Curse landing on the troll. There's the Global Silence. Korok unable to land a single spell right now. Does have a haste, however, so he's going to go straight for No-Tail, skewering himself forward. Shockwave as well as right clicks should do the job as it should. Yes, it does. Now, two trolls on the run. That's going to be pretty much it, but Liquid with that victory over the Chen, they're going to go straight for the Roshan. They do still have Vision of Era, that one point in Shadow Poison spotting everything out. These trolls are going to make it out just barely. At least one of them will. And Fluff actually is going to be uh, the one to survive from that fight. Ix Mike with the friendly disruption, saving that Windrunner from the second blast of the call down. They end up only taking that Chen as well as one of his creeps. They don't take the Aegis, nothing else, but you know, small victories from Liquid. That Global Silence burned as well, and Mag does still have his ultimate available to him. He's going to take a lot of damage from this, though. Boom, down to half HP. However, he does still have the, his ultimate. Batrider's ultimate should be up by now. He's going to go straight for Ira, who was trying to go for the Roshan, but an instant entangle from Hani. Bulba taking a lot of damage. There's the disruption once again from Ix Mike. Curse going to fly onto the uh, life zone. He's going to invest in the Spirit Bear, but he's on the high ground, so he's a non-factor, at least for another couple of seconds. They want to keep this Spirit Bear up there as long as they can. However, they don't really have enough gas to keep going on this. Korok still held on to his reverse polarity. Call down, though, is on cooldown. Bulba does not have that lasso either. A very, very lucky entangle from Hani, saving Ira from any further uh, you know, damage. Because first an entangle, you're not going to get dragged anywhere. Bulba could have brought him right into the clutches of Team Liquid, where they could have dismantled that life sealer. But an entangle will cancel that off. Even though I think uh, one of them got bashed by Roshan. I think it was the bear. No, no, no. It was it was Ira that got bashed by Roshan. But he wasn't moving anywhere anyway, so Radiant it's a non-factor. Liquid's still looking for a push in this mid lane. They don't have their lasso, however, they do still have this RP. I've been saying that, like, pretty much every 30 seconds now. Radiant but call down an RP is a devastating Radiant. combo, and if you're a, and if, uh, Fnatic get caught in that, that could be a complete team wipe. Liquid, though, they also know that the Global Silence is down, but it is not going to be down for long. Another 10 seconds before that spell is up, and they really, really want this tier 1 tower, but all the while, Hani is just farming in the jungle. Not going to be here for this fight, but it seems like Fnatic, they're okay with taking this fight without him, but he is moving down right now. It's going to be Bulba who's going to find the bear first. Blink away, no, he's going to get hit by that bear. A little bit of damage, just Korok on, has that last word on him. Bear on the front lines, forcing everyone from Team Liquid back. Korok does have a re re uh, re regeneration rune, so he will be able to recuperate all of his health. But what we have right now is a classic case of a Mexican standoff. Both teams sitting around not doing much. Korok taking a lot of damage, popping that regeneration rune, and Fnatic once again going to try to go for that Rashawn. Bulba spotting everything out, going to go for Blink Lasso. He's going to catch No Tail, but once again, that net canceling off that Lasso from doing anything. Bulba's going to drop first. Lone Druid is going to pick up that kill. Hand of God flies out as well as the Global Silence. Croc forced to scare his way out of there instead of landing that RP because of that silence. And now Fnatic with the Batrider dead, the Blink uh, Lasso initiation really, really didn't work out for them because of that troll trap, denying any sort of drag back from the Batrider. Two man on that Shackle Shot, but it's only a level one Shackle Shot? Yeah, it's only level one. Level five on the Windrunner, not very useful. Shockwaves from the uh, Satyrs flying out and the Bear on the front lines, right in top of IX Mike, taking a lot of damage. It should be fine, however. Silence on the Korok, and TC just opening up with his level four Rocket Barrage. Syndrome is invisible. But I think Liquid might have spotted that. Yeah, they're putting down sentry wards all over the place. They do know that he is around. They're not going to be caught off guard by this Lestrac. But really, all this, and it's only one death. That's from Team Liquid. They dot, they lose the Batrider for the first time after using his lasso. But another 30 seconds, and I guess they're going to try again for that mid-tier 1 tower. Syndrin is still around with those 3 points in Lightning. Got to watch out for the like, Skewer as well as the uh, Shackle Shot, even though it's not very... Uh, not a high level, it still has a long range attached to it. Ix Mike and Fluff both getting hit by that split earth, and now the, the nuke damage. Chen with the test of faith, saying that Ix Mike's faith is not high enough. There, right on top of Fluff, he's gonna get out of there just fine. Korok getting slowed down by the life stealer. Oh, but is still around, forcing everyone from Fnatic to take more of a defensive position. They don't want this Batrider engaging on them, but the last word triggering that silence, and now Batrider getting first hit entangled by this bear. You are the luckiest bear of all time, at least versus the Batrider. 
And Liquid, once again, they don't take a good trade there. A perfect, perfect usage of that last word. A little bit unfortunate from the Batrider popping off the Firefly as soon as he got that last word cast on him. He wanted to go for a Blink Lasso, but that just wasn't enough. And now this tower should be brought down. Windrunner, yes, does get that right click over Trixie. The Roshan is still alive. He's had so much time to regenerate. He's going to bash down Eero for just a little bit. And Liquid, they still want to contest this. Why not contest this? They don't have that tier 1 tower to teleport themselves to, so Batrider going to teleport to the bot lane. Roshan slowly getting weakened now, and RP still not used. Korok waiting for that good initiation timing, but he's simply not finding it. This might be it, though. Three clumps up right here. There's the global silence. Trixie trying to save himself. He will for the moment. Korok is going to die before unleashing that RP. Lestrak picks up that kill. Bulba's going to find Hani in a lasso, but he's going to get netted himself, and none of that disabled duration went to any usage. Fluff on the run. He's going to make it out of there just fine. In the meantime, Trixie probably got gunned down by the rocket barrage of the gyrocopter. Now the rest of Team Liquid, they're moving down from the north, but not enough health, not enough mana on this gyro. Both him as well as Ix Mike have got to run away from this because there is a pissed lone druid with the haste rune surfing after them. Ix Mike has got to run. He only has level 1 boots with his spirit bear. Does have phase. And Ira was inside that lone druid as well. Hani's going to find the kill on that shadow demon. Rocket's going to fly, but really it's not that big deal because TC is very, very weak. There's the finally a reverse polarity onto Hani, but he still does have a little bit of that haste rune left. He's going to run himself very far away. Korok still in the chase is not going to pursue that. Instead, go for the spirit bear. Perhaps Sindrin going to get a little bit of a stun from that shackle, but he is on the run as well. Going to try for a split earth, going to land it on Bulb, but I don't think he's going to be able to escape this. One more shot. One more shot. Anyone. Could anyone, can anyone fire? And a first in Entangle, of course. Korok from long range is going to finally pick up the Lishrak. There you go, gotta get that Lestrat kill. Korok, though, on the run, has a bear right on top of him. Where's the entangle? Hani, are you lucky enough for this? Let's see. Let's see. One more hit. One more hit. Uh, he's a little bit too far away. His main bear guy, a little bit too far. Fnatic lose the Lishrak. But in the end, all this action, it's still only a 4 for 7 game. Korok takes some pretty heavy hits from the silence. You're gonna drop down to 150 HP. And really, did I stumble into an only mid game? Because I think that's what might actually be going on right now. Uh, yeah, because bot lane, there's been no one here for like, what, five, seven minutes? Top lane, too, it's being pushed, and they just don't want to leave this mid lane because Roshan is still alive. This is why he has Aegis the Immortal, because Roshan truly is immortal. Maybe this time, Fnatic will be able to kill him. It looks like they will, because everyone from Liquid is forced to go back to the base and heal. No tier 1 tower to teleport to, and yes, Roshan finally is going to go down. No Tail is going to acknowledge that as well, but they do claim it, and that's what counts. Finally, finally 18 minutes in, but 18 minutes in, let's take a look at how the gold is looking. Not surprisingly, it is in the way of Fnatic. They've constantly been getting these trades better and better. <laughs> Where's Suda asking for a save? I don't think that uh, is possible in Dota 2, but used to be in Dota 1. If you took a rush on or took a good fight, you would just ask for a save. So if you crash, you would load that right back up. But Fnatic, in the end of all that, with the two towers on the top lane that they have brought down, with the Roshan on top of that, uh, they do have the experience as well as the gold advantage. However, uh, Liquid, uh, they do still have the team fight advantage if they could get through this global silence. So Silencer really, uh, Trixie is what's saving Fnatic from any drastic team fights. Actually, I changed my mind. This bear and his lucky entangles was saving them. Every time Batrider blinks in, first hit entangle. <laughs> denied. Sucks to be you, Batrider. But yeah, between those two heroes, though, Dyer's Team Liquid's team fight just is you know refusing drill. to come together. Dyer's now it's going to be what looks like another fire. trade. Tier 2 on the bottom lane. Liquid smoked up, Dyer's all heading up north. They're going to down. get this tier 1. Pretty much no doubt about that, but is it worth losing their tier 2? They are behind, so this trade Dyer's might favor them a little bit, but that's a stretch. At worst, at worst, it benefits Fnatic. There's no way that this trade could benefit Liquid. They're going to get what they could, you know, what they can, but losing a tier 1 for a tier 2 is really never a trade you want to take. Now Hani, after all those fights, has not died a single time. Four kills for him. He has picked up the armlet on this bear. Apparently, this is a mechanic that is not the same in Dota 1. This is actually a bug. So, I, yeah, it's going to be changed. So, we're probably going to be seeing more Radiance Bears, more uh, Lightning Hammer Bears in the future. Once they iron out those details. Silencer, not really packing that much. He does have his drums. 
has died a couple times in those fights. Sindrin has an urn, has a bracer. Era does have only his Vlad still, 1800 gold as well. Mech up on the Chen, however, that mech is mirrored on the Windrunner as well. Liquid still looking for that Blink Dagger on the Magnus, so he get a better RP than just one person. Gyrocopter does have a Shadow Blade, and he's looking for some big hits. However, the tower is dropping very quickly because of the Spirit Bear and his Demolish and a God keeping everything alive. And this tower should drop unless we see initiation from DC. Gonna drop the call down. Miss completely onto everything. Or I guess miss off of miss everything. And not you know, can't miss onto something, right? But miss everything. And Fnatic gonna take the tower and back up very, very easily. Bulba wants to fight right now, but he knows that this bear is gonna hit him and entangle him on the first shot like that. Look at this bear. This is insane. Defensive disruption is going to save him. Liquid Bulba blinking in for the flame break instead of the lasso. A little bit of a misplay perhaps. Split Earth not going to fly and everyone is going to walk away from this one. Lots of posturing. No big spells used. Just damage being thrown back and forth. But Fnatic still, this is like their initiation right now. If you look at their team, you would say, well, they don't really have a great hero for the Lysu to go in. I guess he'd go into the bear who has a lot of moving speed, but there's no Storm Spirit, there's no Queen of Pain or anything like that. But no, their initiation is going to be from a Spirit Bear and his first hit in Tangles, which has been very reliable thus far, so why not continue to rely on it? They're going to find TC with that bear. But Hani's just finding his farm everywhere he goes. Even going to go for a global pace, so probably is going to go for a lightning hammer after that armlet. Maelstrom is a very good transition after that uh, armlet, or even before the armlet. Armlet's just a really good item on the bear nowadays, because it's that's broken. It's literally broken. It's not supposed to be like that. So, but Lots of damage is going to be coming out from Hani, and Life Stealer still... What are you saving for? I picked up a gem. Really, five assists on this life so there hasn't picked up a single last hit on the hero yet. Yet, he still is remaining relevant in these fights just because Open Wounds is a really, really freaking good slow. And that aura, of course, helping everyone from Fnatic, especially this bear, to stay alive as well as do the damage. So life stealer, I don't really know what he's aiming could to go for. He already does have drums on his teams. So possibly just gonna get a desolator? Vlad's Desso, you do a lot of damage, that means you steal a lot of life. I guess. I don't know. Trixie on this top lane, 15 seconds until his global silence is up, but everyone from Liquid on this bot lane, do they really want to siege this again? Because last time they tried to siege a tower, it took like five minutes for them to bring it down. Blank Dagger off a of Magnus, though. This is their opportunity. If the fingers are quick on the Magnus, then he should be able to get a good RP, but if the fingers are faster than the silencer, then he should be able to deny that. But it is a 4v5 on this top lane. Everyone from Fnatic, there are smoked up, waiting in the wings. Korok waiting for to jump in. Does he have any vision? Now he does. No, he doesn't. Looking for it. Where's the global silence? Shackle onto Ira, not going to latch onto anything. And slowed down, TC has the open wounds on him. To take a little bit of lightning as well. And the bear chasing out Korok. Fnatic do successfully defend. Oh, there's the blink for it. Instant silence. Boba, where's the first hit entangle? Bear, what are you doing, you lazy? TC gonna drop the call down onto Ira as well as the Chen creeps. Not gonna do all that much. Ira's getting kited to hell and back. He's gonna try to fight up TC one versus one. However, the rocket barrage actually getting spread out a little bit amongst the creeps of Chen. And Ira with the infest is gonna do enough damage to kill him off. Sindrin is gonna get hit by a power shot. And he's gonna drop as well. One for one, but here comes the bear once again. Where is Korok? Where is he? Still looking for an angle for reverse polarity, but even at this point, it's a little bit too late. Bulba is on the run, has a very angry bear right on top of him. Blink Dagger, he needs to use it right now. He's going to blink further away, and he should be fine to teleport out of here. However, Fluff, he is not as lucky. Wind run into a teleportation. No troll trap. He is going to make it out alive, and Korok still with no RP liquid. They're fighting with one arm tied behind their back. But that's because Fnatic, I guess, have previously tied Liquid's arm behind their back. They're denying Korok any opportunity to get a good RP off. Really, once you RP after the Gyrocopter is dead, it's kind of pointless. After the Gyro is dead, there's no more damage. Your RP is, even if it catches all five, you might be able to pick off one, possibly two. But, the T but TC as well as Mag, they need to work together. And, well, when TC gets isolated in one direction going south here, and Korok gets isolated in another direction going to the west here, really, there's no way for Liquid to get that team fight together, because once the bear goes onto Korok, he's forced to go back. He cannot stand and fight the bear. 
I guess you could try to skewer out and dodge it or something like that. But the bear using that as a zoning tool more so than a damaging tool, although it is it is being used as both. Uh, but the impact that it has zoning is a lot more intense than the impact that it has damage because Korok and TC they're not able to come together and actually have a good fight. Although this might be it, there is the blink forward for a shockwave onto No Tail. Skewer forward is going to slow him down. That's going to kill him off Gyrocopter with that kill. Boba finding Syndrome with that lasso is going to kill him before he can turn around for the split Earth with that flame break. Bulba's going to work towards the force staff, but Liquid finding two much-needed picks only on the support heroes of Fnatic, but, you know, you can take what, take what you can get. Ira shackled to a tree, has gone for his armlet. There's the reverse polarity only on Tira. Can they bring him down before the rage happens? Yes, they can. Gem on the floor as well. Who's going to pick it up? No one, it looks like. There it is. Ix Mike's going to find that. And Liquid finally using that RP for a kill onto Ira as he teamed up with the damage dealer of TC, which, look at that. Two support heroes down, life stealer down as well. This is going to be a tier 2 tower for Liquid. They do have to teleport back and deal with Hani, who's still on this bottom lane, however. But Liquid, although they've been getting kind of the short end of the stick for all of these trades, three picks in a row, that'll, that's going to be what gets you back into the game. If you are ever behind like this, smoke up, look for picks, because Fnatic, there they feel pretty comfortable. They have a decent... Uh, lane equilibrium on all the lanes, especially the bot lane, actually. So they're going to be feeling comfortable to move out and try to farm a little more aggressively, especially with these supports. You catch them out, they're dog meat. Now, Hani might be in a little trouble. 15 seconds until the lasso is up. But even if they go for this bear, I'm not sure if they have enough damage to bring him down. It's like they're not even going to go try for that. TC is still farming. Shadow Blade up on him, has been up for a while, has something else. It is going to be a Manta style rush. Looks like going for that ultimate orb wants to get that a uh, little bit of a jump of HP over that Yasha movement speed. If you have the money, sometimes it's what you want to do. Bear on the chase, Hani right behind. Bear Bear, first in entangle. No, it's not going to catch up to Fluff. 522 movement speed, that you can't catch that. Ike's Mike going to find some farm in this bottom lane. Possibly get a couple of HP items, a bracer or two. It's also just pushing that out. A little bit of split push up going towards Fnatic's base, forcing them back into their base. However, Silencer is going to take this as an opportunity to farm up, and he's going for Necrobook. So that Shadow Blade from the Gyrocopter not going to be effective as an escape tool once that item does come up. On top of that, it's going to give him some much needed strength. 12 strength, 16 strength. It's not the most HP. But hey, you get those extra little minions, a lot of attack speed for the lone druids, bear. A good, solid item to pick up if you are on Team Fnatic. And Liquid, they have, they're have they the kind of team that has a lot of AoE, where you know they just kind of throw it around. The call down, the reverse polarity shockwave, power shots, as well as the firefly. The, those uh, necromanians, especially the uh, suicide one, I think it's the melee one. I can never remember. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, the range one has mana burn, the melee one has that, that bottom last floor. will or whatever it's called. Uh, if you get that killed, then it's a lot of pure damage from into Liquid's face. Not a good situation if you're Liquid, but a good situation is taking out another tier 2 tower. However, Hani, once again, on this top lane, he's just everywhere that Liquid is not. He's going to go for a... Oh, yes. Very, very weird way to build this item up, but it's an Abyssal Blade. I expect... I don't think he's going to go for a Radiance after... I don't know. I don't know. Could be anything. It's a little bit late for a Radiance. TC getting caught by a control trap. Bulba looking for initiation. Does see Syndrin. He go for it, but he's going to get troll trapped immediately if he does do so. Everyone from Liquid, they're going to fall back, and they should be fine to do so. Oh, Ix Mike taking the slowest teleport route possible, and he's going to stick the landing. Bulba also getting out of there. Oh, they also use Global Silence for that to save Hani, Korok. Got there first, and Hani is going to get out of there very, very easily. The tier 3 tower has been dropped. This lone druid's bear does a lot of damage. It's a free tier 3 tower for Fnatic. Liquid, they tried to defend it. It was a little bit too little too late. Now the damage from this life stealer as well as Trixie. They're going to try for this second Roshan. But we will see if this actually works. Oh, yes, last will on the melee one. I am correct. Power shot flying through. Roshan very, very weak. Where's the initiation? There it is. On to Trixie. No global silence for this fight. TC going to stand and deliver. He is just doing the damage. Korok, burst polarity. He's actually canceled it off. Okay, well done. Trixie still doing a lot of damage. Is going to die, but he is going to heal as much as he can before that. TC going to team up with Korok to try to kill off this bear. Everyone from Fnatic is still up toward the north. However, the bear is down. They do still have a resummon. However, Hani can instantly pop that off. 
Trixie bought back. Now he's back into this fight. And looks like <laughs> Bulba in the middle of nowhere trying to get out of there himself. Ix Mike. Oh no, Korok is going to get entangled once again. Spamming off that reverse polarity, but he knows he's dead. TC taking a good hit from that infest damage. They don't have true sight, I don't believe. No, they don't. But Hani going to cut them both off, or all of them off. Ix Mike going to drop in an instant due to the damage of the bear. And Magnus, River Rage quit. No, it's not. He just has. Croc is, is like notorious for having a bad computer, or bad connection, or one of the two for disconnecting. But Liquid not pausing it, possibly telling Fnatic that they don't have Magnus's buyback. Yeah, there you go. Really, Fluff. I did not realize. And Magnus, unfortunately, was not there for the fight. He was, at least, didn't get killed because of it. You could tell because he was spamming off that RP before he died. But still, uh, it's you don't really want to have your player out of the game for too long. Fnatic, with the chasing power of this bear, and really with the power that comes from so much tankiness on their front lines, this bear is essentially a 6th and, I would say, 7th hero. It brings two heroes worth of power into this game just because of how stacked it is for this time period in this game. And Liquid, they don't have the damage to bring it down as well as focus off everyone else from Fnatic. While they're trying to focus the bear, that means Eero's doing the damage, that means Trixie's doing the damage. And Liquid, where's their damage coming from? RP. Still up. I don't know why. Don't know how. But it's been casted like twice. Once? It was casted on Eero. It was casted twice. I think this game. But uh, that's about like four less than you really want it to be cast at this stage of the game. You really need that RP to come out, or else you're just simply not going to win these fights. There's the buyback from the Magnus. Unfortunately, that DC delayed that just a little bit. Era as well as Sindrin going to get shackled together. Where's the RP? Korok, is he going to cast it? There it goes, but the melee racks is already down. Era is going to stand and fight, and Sindrin, where did he go? He got sent back to the base by Chen. He's going to be just fine. Era is going to pop the Aegis. Do they have enough to kill him off for a second time? Missile's gonna fly, Bulba blinks in straight for that lasso, gonna drag him back into the tier 4 towers. Ira gonna stand and fight versus Korok. Korok is gonna get friendly disrupted, and Ira should drop again. They do have enough damage to do so. Yes, they do. So Ira is going to die, but trading his life for the melee racks, that is more than worth it. Ira's gonna be fine waiting 45 seconds. He is glad with that trade. And Fnatic, they're going to be okay with that as well. Sindarin, for some reason, he escaped that. That was really, really clutch teleportation from Chen. Did he use the hand of God? Didn't really notice if he did. He did not use it. But Fnatic, oh. Okay, interesting from Fnatic. Gonna go for the Mass Necro Book. The Shrak is unfortunately not participating in that. Lone Druid is not either. He's actually gonna go for 30 minute Radiance. So Fnatic, they want a lot of pushing. A little bit of what I talked about in the draft, however, coming together a lot later than I expected. Lashrak with only two points in Edict, but getting all these Necro Books this late, that last will is going to wreak havoc amongst Liquid. Whoever is unlucky enough to kill off those melee creeps is going to take a huge chunk of damage. And Liquid don't even have the units that could kill off the uh, the minion for them, like Chen or someone or the Lone Druid Bear. I think he. Uh, I think the Lone Druid Bear works. Bulba, he'll blink straight forward. Trixie, and a god gonna try to save him. Global Silence will not come out this fight. If he does go down, he does go down as well. Bulba with the Firefly damage, killing off the Silencer. It's 45 seconds where the Silencer is not gonna be in this fight. And where's my frame rate? TC going to get defensive disruption once again. Ira on the front line is gonna try to go for Korok. He is going to bring him down. TC though, where did he go? He is running down to the south, and everyone from Fnatic is chasing him. The Radiance on the bear. TC is not going to escape. He's going to try and turn and fight. No tail, living at just a sliver of HP. 86 on him, but in the end, it's a trade. Korok and TC for just Trixie. They hold on to their tier 3 tower, and Korok once again has to DC. Starting to feel the effects of Korok's poor internet all the way over here, where my computer is seemingly struggling to complete this game. Come on, computer. Thank you, Bulba. That was actually pretty cool. Now I could try to get my frame rate back up. Wait, why are they going? Korok is still disconnected. <laughs> well, he doesn't have buyback, so I guess it's another 20 seconds. Bulba's got to be listening in to, like, Ventrilo or About TeamSpeak time. or whatever, and he's like, Guys, guys, wait. I'm not here. <laughs> Bulba gonna put up a wall of fire now, Fnatic, because Trixie got nailed out last fight. That means his global silence was saved for this fight. Ix Mike getting dropped down to half HP in two hits. 
Shackle Shot onto Hani as well as his bear. They're going to try to bring this bear down. However, I don't think they have enough damage to do so, especially with the power shot missing. Flame Break going to hit. And 70 damage. Ooh, the poison damage is going to kill it off. Hani with another 18 seconds until that bear is up. Going to force Fnatic back at least for now. And I have to pause this game. My apologies, guys. I'm going to slow down, pause, and I'm going to stop the recording. Try to start back up again. Here we go. It's still not working. What the hell, computer? Why are you doing this to me? This is never a problem. I've never played a game of Dota where this is a problem. But it's a problem now. So, I don't know, 34 minutes into the game, I'm just going to roll with it. This game can't last for too much. No, but this game is still so even, I don't know. With only a 5,000 gold advantage for Fnatic, it's only a 4,000 experience advantage for them as well. They're not, they're ahead. They're not too ahead, so... Look, we could still come back if they land a good RP. However, the RPs really haven't been going too well for them. Link Dagger's going to help them do that. And if they nail out Trixie, then that could happen. But this bear still is absolutely terrifying. As I've said multiple times, he did go for the Radiance Hyperstone. Really, just leaving that Gloves of Haste there. Huh. Well, I mean, Gloves of Haste are, is a pretty cost-effective item. I do have to say, and I, for some reason I was thinking Gloves of Haste built into a Basher. Because he got that as well as the Relic at the same time. So I'm like, he won't go for a Radiance. It has to be a Abyssal Blade. But it's clearly not how it goes. Because I don't, I seem to not know what Abyssal Blade builds from Them dire buildings are totally Basher as well now. as the Relic. But, you know, whatever. Frame rate's back. We're going to see a straight push down the mid lane. They already have that top lane taken care of, and they're possibly just waiting for Roshan. It's going to be another four minutes before that happens, so I expect four minutes of pretty much passive farming. Trying to get every single camp on the map. Fnatic with their map control should be able to make most of that happen. This bear on the bottom lane, just with that Radiance burn, is going to push that out. Very, very easy to do. Late Radiance, it doesn't really matter versus the creeps that much. They're, yes, their HP values do increase as you wait longer into the game. But it's not that a big deal, because the Radiance Burn is going to burn them down pretty much no matter what. Give a lot of momentum to that lane. Everyone from Liquid smoked up, looking for action before Roshan. However, they're not going to find anyone. And if they do, it's going to be a 5 versus 5 rumble. Hani's going to pull his bear back as soon as that happens. And the yeah, Fnatic, they're not going to get caught off by this. Not by a long shot. They see everyone from Liquid is gone. No one is up on this top lane dealing with this huge impending push. So they know that they are going to have more than enough time to wait this Roshan out. Put some pressure onto all the lanes. Possibly set up a trap for TC on the spot lane. Do they have a gem? Yes, they do onto Chen. They also have a couple of Necro books coming out, but TC, he does see the bear, but he does not know that there is an entire Fnatic side right behind him. They'd get the open wounds there. Nope, yep, there's the true sight on him. TC gonna split with that Mantis style, save himself from that slow from Era. Smoke attempts failed on both sides. Fnatic, they do still have a pretty big push onto this top lane, however. Where are they going to go? They're going to go for the mid lane? They just want to kill off these creeps. Yeah, the tower's already down. You might as well go for that mid lane. Bear, though, taking a lot of damage from that curse of Ix Mike. Look at the bear's HP just plummet. Can't really afford to go in with an increased 20% damage. Only 20% damage. Usually it should be plus 50, but 20% is still pretty substantial. Especially when the bear doesn't really have all that much resistance or anything like that. But Fnatic just posturing a little bit. They want to get that bear back up to full HP. With the Vlads on Era, they should be able to do that relatively easily. Combined with the fact that the bear is just absolutely monstrous. But they're just waiting for Roshan. Two minutes until that happens in Liquid. They they for sure have that mark. They sh If they don't have that, then well, I feel for them. But Because I never mark it, I always forget. But yeah, Fnatic, they're just waiting around in Liquid. They really can't afford to move out at all. They, I don't think they have any wards up. They have one one sentry ward in their base. In fact, they're, they're not really ward heavy either. They have a couple of rather clustered observer wards. However, they have the map control. Top lane is continuously pushing in. Bot lane constantly got pressure, especially with the lone druid and then his entire team right after that. And then mid lane is where Fnatic just was, so they pushed that out when they're on their way to Roshan. So it's going to be a little bit of a wait until we get to that uh, Roshan mark once again. Liquid, do they have any big items coming up? Batrider is going to go for an Ogre Club. I really, really hope that's Heaven's Halberd. BKB will not help him in this fight. I guess you could dispel the Global Silence out of that. 
but Entangle is really the problem, and, well, he's, it's not going to help you versus Entangle. Magnus does have a Ghost Scepter, so he'll be able to survive a little bit more. TC is going for a little bit of lifesteal. Really, I think if this, if any game called for Divine Rapier, I think it's this one, because they're just not taking the team fights that they really need to take. Nah, they're getting bigger and bigger. Level 3 Necrobook on that Silencer. Level 1, almost level 2 on Chen. Should be level 2 soon. Only level 1 onto No Tail, but hey, more Necro Minions. Pure damage from that last will. Hani's Bear has just that Radiance Hyperstone, and he's sitting at 2,000 gold, so heading straight towards that AC, most likely. And Ira, still with 2,300 gold, picked up his drums, actually. Rather late drums in the Silencer. Usually it is a, you, you get drums first or not at all just because it's made of cheap components, very easy to build up. Cost effective, but doesn't give the hugest uh, straight up benefits. Liquid, they're doing exactly what they need to do. Push down the bot lane, push out the mid lane, and then prep for this Roshan fight. Which is about to happen in about another minute, 30 seconds. Yes, I'm going to keep my eye on you, Korok. Bulba's got to get the initiation right as well. I really don't have to keep my eye on Trixie since he just presses his ultimate button. And I'll see the effects when I'm keeping my eye on Liquid. So yeah, it's up to Liquid to make this fight happen. If Fnatic get the jump onto Liquid, then it is all over. So Liquid, they have to get this lasso right. If they get it onto Silencer, if they pull it out and kill him, then that'll be fantastic. But oh, this is not what they want to have happen. Shackle onto the bear, lightning onto Fluff, and this bear still chasing Fluff down with that maxed out movement speed with life there inside. A lot of damage. Demonic Purge, though, going to slow him down straight in his tracks. Korok going to come up from the side. Spare taking a lot of damage. However, do they ever resummon? They do. They don't have any effective way of restoring the Spare's HP, however, but looks like they don't really need to. They have, oh, they have an Urn Charge. That works, I guess. They push Liquid back all the way to their base. The top lane is in full breach, and TC going to take that couple of seconds to deal with that. That couple of seconds means that he's not going to be in this fight. That means Roshan is going to drop. Power shots or no power shots. Roshan is dropping so very quickly. And who's going to pick it up? Ira? Yeah, he's prepping to pick it up. No. Yeah, it's Hani actually dropping that TB scroll. TB, TB scrolls everywhere. It's cheese on the life there. Once again, the bear on the front lines. Burning with that radiance. Bulba looking for initiation. Where is he going to go? He's going to go for Trixie, who already got caught in the burst polarity. Double onto that. Trixie can get pulled right back into the enemy... Uh, the enemy side of the river. Global Silence is going to fly, however, Trixie is already dead. Now, Korok going to run with that lone druid. He's going to get disrupted. First landing onto the bear. Hani should be able to make it out just fine. TC going to open up once again with that Shadow Blade hit, as well as the Black Cane doing heavy damage to everyone. Bulba going to get Force Staff out, dodging the stun. Force Staff out once again, going up to the uphill. TC, though, going to split out of that bear's harassment. The bear still alive, still chasing him down with that Radiance. Doesn't know where he is. TC going to go and hide, but two down for Liquid, that's really all they, uh, they lost two in exchange for the Silencer, did they take the Aegis, did they take the Cheese, they took the Aegis from Hani, which is good, I guess, but they still have a huge impending push in this mid lane, Fortification going to slow that down, but they don't have the RP, they do have the call down, which is going to force the era back a little bit. Unfortunately, they don't have creep support at all. Top lane in the meantime. What are you doing, Courier? Where are you going? What? This is this is Team Liquid's Courier. I don't know why. I have no clue why he's up here. Taking a little bit of trip outside the base, but still 12-15, a relatively calm game. Korok finally got his RP on to... Really, the damage follow-up wasn't there from Liquid. There's not enough damage from this gyrocopter who really needs something like an MKB, or dare I say, a Divine Rapier, in order to really solidify this game for Liquid. Until then, this bear is just remaining an unkillable monster. Life Sealer does have his cheese still. Another 3,500 gold in his pocket. Could go for Desolator, could go for a straight-up heart if he wants to just get more damage. More health, I mean. Focus on his health, but it also increases damage. Or, hell, he could even be the one going for AC. Although, I think Hani should have that done by now. No, where's the bear? There it is. Yep, AC is done on the bear. So, lots more armor on this bear. Here, with the cheese still up, is Fnatic really going to sit back and wait for another Roshan? My lord. They have the Global Silence up in 5. They have BKB on the Lashrak. No tail. Level 2, almost level 3. Should be level 3 flying out, actually. No, it's actually full Desolator for Era. Just as good, if not better, than a level 3. 
and all the while there was posturing in that uh, Roshan area, the top lane was being pushed out completely. So now a full set of racks is going to come down on this top lane. Oh yes, TC, gonna go big. Liquid gonna go for game one for a game one victory against what seems like very poor odds against them. Still the favor, not hugely in favor of Fnatic. Liquid managing to keep these fights very, very close. But every single fight, Fnatic just gets a little bit of a better trade. Bear's gonna catch ball with a first hit and tangle. One four staff out, two four staffs out, but Life Stealer already doing heavy damage with that and Fest Bulba on the run. Forced to pop his BKB. Two hits is gonna kill off the Shadow Demon. And now Fnatic, they're barreling down the mid lane. Still don't have any creep support, but it looks like they don't care because this bear is doing a lot of damage. Call down is going to do a little bit. Missile is gonna do a little bit, but really, it's not gonna do enough. The Raxes have gone down. Rocket Barrage opening up on the bear. They do have a resummon, however, so they're not gonna mind this too much. Korok looking for initiation. He's gone for the Helm of the Dominator. I have no idea why. Take a Necro unit. Korok is going to find Syndra and fight him. No, he's not going to fight him. Going to go back to his team where they're trying to kill off the bear one additional time. I really hope this bear doesn't die because then this game is going to go on for at least another, what, 360 seconds. No, it's not 360 seconds. What the hell am I smoking? That's six minutes. What has this cooled down in six minutes? 120. That is... I'm... Wow, that was horrible. That, yeah, I don't play Lone Druid, you can tell. <laughs> you can tell. It's another two minutes where the Lone Druid has completely no items. So right now he's just a level 18 hero with Tranquil Boots, so he's fairly useless. Losing his bear, but trading it once again for the Raxes. If Liquid want to push, then now is the time. This is pretty much their only time. Do they have reverse polarity? They still do. I'm not too sure about this Helm of the Dominated pick from Magnus. It's like, usually you go damage or you go for utility. And this one is kind of wonky survivability. I guess the armor is going to be nice, but five armor is its really not enough. Just pick up a plate mail if you want to defend yourself against the bear as well as the life stealer. Oh, here we go. TC with the Divine Rapier barreling down the mid lane right now. They know that the bear is down for another something like 45 seconds, although they don't have the exact clock. There goes the creep wave in two shots. And straight mid lane push. If Liquid take a good team fight now, they win the game. If they lose TC, they lose the game. So... This just got very, very interesting. Bulba has everything he has up and available, as does Korok. Fnatic, do they have the Global Silence? Not for another 15 seconds. This is a perfect window of opportunity for Liquid to take a Rax, probably more. Fortification to slow them down. Top lane is being pushed out very aggressively by the Creep Wave. They have to move down to the bot lane or go for the GG after these Raxes. Lightning gonna fly, do a little bit of preliminary damage to TC. They're going to bring down one set of Raxes at least. Are they going to fall back after this? They're already making the move down to the bot lane. There's the blink forward. They're going to catch Sindrin. One hit, two hit. He's going to drop first. Person the sign flying out. Maxed out, but really it's not going to bother them too much. TC, where are you? Got to keep my eye on this hero. Global Science is going to fly. However, everyone from Liquid perfectly safe. Mech going to heal them all up back to full HP. Sindrin in the front lines with a BKB. Everyone can just turn around and kill him though. TC needs to get in there. There's the wrist polarity has been waiting for all game. Catching the bear. Catching no tails. Will's ear. They're all going to evaporate to TC with the divine rapier. Pulling out the game. Trixie on the run, as is Hani. Syndrome going to return to this fight once again, but Bulba getting a double kill out of that. TC still very much alive with that life steal. He's going to get a second set of racks, and this probably is going to be GG. Life stealer killed before he could even pop off that cheese. Global Silence was used, but completely, uh, pretty much completely whiffed. You landed on all of them, but they were very far away from your team, so that all the seconds that the Global Silence gave to Fnatic for, to make an opening resulted in no opening being made. Now TC with the ultimate desperation move, the Divine Rapier on the Gyrocopter. Actually, not not too desperate on the Gyrocopter. It's pretty, pretty damn good, as you can see. They're going to take out the mid lane. They're going to take out the bot lane. They're going to take out the tier 4. They have 19 seconds to end the game. Can they actually do this? They do still have the Divine Rapier. Do they have a lasso? Yes, they do. And GG has been called Fnatic with the lead all game until... The final seconds where the gold advantage goes to zero with the EXP skyrockets in Liquid's favor. Liquid take game number one on the back of a Divine Rapier Gyrocopter. I would say what a game, but that's nah, really... What a final two minutes. That was exciting. That last two minutes totally made up for the fact that the rest of the game was nothing but a farm fest. But that's going to be it for me. For now, guys, game one between Liquid and Fnatic from the Premier League Season 4 is going to go to Team Liquid. Moving on to game number two, GG.